Living on Psilocybin, Part One. This is a series of highly personal of a highly personal nature. Not something that I ever have been comfortable doing. But I've decided to do this because there exists a tremendous crying need for us as a people in our pain and trauma who want to change and who want to embrace joy. July 8th, I've gotten to the point where I feel angry, depressed, anxious, unduly intolerant of my imperfect but beloved spouse. I can't seem to stop it, and I'm smoking way too much weed. It affects my lungs, my balance, even my vision, and I am essentially bored by my own inertia. I smoke to alleviate that boredom. The 20 milligrams of Lexapro sort of helps, but its effects have diminished over time. The worst thing is I find my motivation is harder and harder to find, and when I find it, to sustain it. This person I do not recognize. I'm the kind of artist who likes to get involved in my community of artists. When I did theater in San Francisco, we created Sangre Theater that was dedicated to pulling in artists of diverse ethnicity so we could cast by talent rather than looking for the right look. It was a rather new idea in 1987, even in the diversity of San Francisco. When I'm in Cambridge, Massachusetts, my not-yet-husband and I created Boston Poet Magazine and Calendar. It was a hit and awaited eagerly by readers on the first of the month. From there, we founded Boston Poet Publishing and published a number of books by local writers. My actions in the mid-1990s inspired others to go out and contribute to the poetry community in a way that still flourishes today. I helped build the jazz poetry venue with Jeff Robinson, which has run over 30 years by now, and it's still going strong. I helped build the Boston Marathon poetry events by providing a techie knowledge and a website. But in Murrieta, California, I tried running a poetry venue. It went dismally. It wasn't like the Boston or San Francisco area. People only came out if there's money involved. And as time settled in, I knew I was isolated in a town with a sparse smattering of culture. My slow-moving depression has caught up with me, and it's dragging me down. It's time for action. Something drastic. But what? A few months ago, I purchased some mushrooms. They've been in the freezer all this time. I was going to trip, but then I started reading about microdosing. I watch a documentary called Change Your Mind. The more I research, the more promising it becomes. But at the same time, too good to be true. So here I am. I grind up the mushrooms, have a very inaccurate scale. There's a tiny bit left over, so I rub it on my teeth and under my tongue like a cokehead. A drug that I disparaged because after a while, after extended use, I observed it made people act like desperate dogs vying for scraps. Not to imply I didn't like it, but a snort and I was good for the rest of the night. It never became the purpose. I write down goals. Better focus, better moods, more tolerance, more energy, less anxiousness, more desire to forge ahead with my podcast, more motivation. July 10th. I have 24 capsules. I take the first dose. Tomorrow is my birthday. Today, I drive to San Diego where stoners gather and just chill and socialize. It's great to find such a place, whether at the beach or at a park. The people who gather are interesting, diverse. They feed me. Gobble, gobble, gobble. I pass out my, my podcast cards. I meet someone who's looking for a writer to work on a short film, a silent short I don't know if he's serious, but it's stimulating. The idea of working on a project, I'm all in. I'm the writer. Going to San Diego really picked up my mood. Then it usually does, but this time I have two hits of smoke. I have to drive back. Is it the psilocybin? I realize I've been smoking to get to a certain high. The more I smoke, the higher I don't get. Of course. I was actually fretting how my relationship with cannabis will change because I really do like smoking cannabis. 
On my way home, I think of the entire plot for the short, silent film. I make the monumental decision to release my podcast in small sections rather than 30-minute episodes. This decision really boosts downloads and lightens the load off me. Micro-podcasts? Why not? July 11th, my birthday. Big deal. My best friend and my spouse are more excited than I am. Why should I be? I've had 73 of them by now. But I have fun anyway. These two people are dear and important, and I love them. July 13th, the short film project guy calls. He seems serious enough. We'll see. The nagging need for cannabis has subsided. I know now to do it for the sheer pleasure, not to match yesterday's high. I've known this forever, but the years away from a vibrant community of artists has taken its toll. I know that when the purpose of getting high is to get high, it becomes a snake swallowing its tail. Please stay tuned for the next installment of Driving on Psilocybin. If you can, don't forget to like and retweet. Even comment. It makes a huge difference. Many thanks to you for listening. This is Nana on Marijuana.